Okay. Um, Emperor Supreme is a DJ uh, slash selector mm -hmm. from East Rand. Um, I grew up in Bass Valley, close to Eastgate, but I was born in Soweto. Mm -hmm. So I was born in Soweto, and shortly after I was born, my mom shifted me to the Eastern Cape to my grandmother's. And then I think in grade one, one land of 40, then I came back. And then from there, since I've always been in Joburg. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the real name? Okay, the real name is Innocentia Gafiso Manga. Yeah. So, yeah. Who, who is Innocentia before <laughs> Empress, Empress Supreme? Supreme. Yes. Yo. Okay, um, Innocentia before <laughs> the whole Empress Supreme vibe. Yeah. Um, an artist really i've always been into art you know from a young young age so i've always done art all my life so i've always been into arts i've always been into music um i've just always been a, a very simple person but who loves people who loves more than anything art yeah. anything art related very creative you know i've studied art all my life mm. you know um i was into music i was exposed to music i went to an art school and then after that, I started fashion. So I've always been into oh, yeah. creativity, creative yeah. field all yeah. my life. Is that something that you took from home or it's just something that you're born with? Mm, I'd say I'm probably like the black sheep in the family. Yeah. Because everyone in the family, they're more into, they more academically inclined. Mm. You know, I was always, okay, academic, I had to balance. You know, I had to be academic and yeah. also into creativity. But from an early age, my mom always nurtured the artistic side of me. Mm. So I've always been the artistic one, you know. But the older I got, my sister also started, you know, getting into the arts, you know. Mm -hmm. And then she started doing dancing. And then she also did, when we went to an art school, she did dancing from there. Mm. And then wakula na yoge. But later on, she continued with corporate. Yeah. So they're into corporate. But I've always stuck to art. Yeah. I've never compromised. Mm -hmm. So as, as much as your mom pushed to that side of, of arts and everything, wasn't she like, like no, but you know, try try academic side corporate it's still it's still the way yo funny enough hey she's always been supportive on that side yeah. because she knew from an early age that i've always been into it mm -hmm. i remember even from primary i'd always win like art competitions at school you know yeah. so from primary i already knew that which high school i'm going to mm -hmm. so i already mm -hmm. knew that i was going into an art um uh, what you call it um institution yeah. you know what i mean yeah. so she's always 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 encouraged that so i'm very fortunate about that and lucky mm. that she was supportive because i know how our parents yes, can be so you know they don't think it's say, a real yeah. thing they don't think it's something that you can yeah. actually make a living out of yeah. you know they just see it as a hobby because mm. they always focus on the corporate you know mm. bring the money yeah. bring the money because i remember now when i told my parents what i wanted to do and my dad was like you want to be a dj <laughs> you know and i'm like no it's not being a dj mm. but, but they all have that the uh, like you know arts yeah. industry it's all about being a dj because yeah. well, i think they they don't have much knowledge about True. you know what's happening True. and so when it comes to so in, you said academic well, well, what did you do academic well? i studied like all the subjects as well you know like yeah. i mean i think in grade 10 you get a choice you get mm -hmm. to choose which ones you want to continue with so i did all the subjects you know your maths you know your yeah. english your afrikaans your geography your biology science yeah you know? i did all of those okay yeah. so but you chose arts but i, the, I the chose winner. art has always been like for me i never compromised yeah. on that side yeah. Yeah. so after college what did what did you get into? yo this me okay um i think in grade 10 that's when I started becoming interested in the movement, you know, yeah. the Rasta movement. So things turned from there. Mm. <laughs> so mom was still cool, you know, but she thought it was a phase. So now I continued grade 10, grade 11, grade 12. Mm. After that, she saw that, no, it was not a phase. It mm. was something that I was like really into and passionate about, you know, and this was part of me now. Mm. From like Christian background, Christianity yeah. background oh, to yeah. Rastafari. It was a huge shock, you know, mm. she didn't understand. So initially, I was supposed to go, you know, go your vets and continue yeah. with my arts. Eh. In fact, I was supposed to go to Lysov. You know, she was adamant, you know, she was happy. But the minute she found out that I was Rasta, yo, everything mm. turned. <laughs> she just like, you know what? 
that 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 thing is gonna pay your yeah. education. So that that was sad. But luckily, I was out there hustling. So I was like, hey, sh- I can't go to vets and continue all life off and continue with what I wanna do. Uh-huh. But I can still continue with what I love, you know. Uh-huh. So what I did is I went. I took myself to um, Pakistan College, uh-huh. CJC, and then I continued studying art. I did fashion designing there, you know. Uh-huh. And then from there, I went to. Um, I wanted to go to photo workshop. Then I did a bit of some classes in photo workshop, but. Uh-huh. Somehow, yeah. Yeah. So I just started freelancing there and there in different places wherever there was like an artistic environment and field. Yeah. I was always there, you know. So when I was in the Pakistan, I used to bake muffins, and that's how I paid for my um, and my, my my college, um, you know, tuition in, in in college, you know. And then after that, I'd work as well part time, you know, to all my piece jobs there and there. So that was pretty cool. And then until I started working seriously, then I got a cool job by um, David Crute, yeah, David Crute Publishing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was pretty cool. I started um, volunteering first. Um, after that, then I got a contract, then I started working there. Mm-hmm. So that was pretty amazing. So you, you were doing what? Then? We did various things there, man, you know, but like the the proper artists, they would do the, 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 the what you call it, um, what are they doing? They were craft, they were, they were, they were, they were do the, the printing, you know what I'm saying? So we didn't really do one thing. Sometimes we would be doing photography, like we'd go out there and take pictures at events. Sometimes we would host um, uh, galleries and stuff like uh, exhibitions. So whenever they had that, different artists, they would come through, like, you know, um, um, Kendrick, William Kendridge, you know, all these different cool artists, like renowned, mm-hmm. Mama Esther, yo, it was amazing. So there, for me, that was like the best job I've ever gotten because I got to learn so much within the art industry, you know. Mm-hmm. And within that, um, it was vast because now I got to see so many people. So what I loved about David Crute is we didn't only do one thing. You, we weren't only doing this, we did database. We had to be all well-rounded yeah. because he was trying to make sure that everyone else who was there is capable and able to do everything else so that if Sister Sigano is not here, somebody else, you know, your Enos can cover up for her, you know. So that was pretty amazing. Yeah. Let's get back to the Rasta. <laughs> <laughs> so when, how, how, how did you become Rasta? You know, like what, what happened? Like saying growing up in a yeah. Christian family. Yeah, you know? <laughs> it was such a huge turn, <laughs> trust me. Um, what happened is, um, I had a cousin of mine who was into reggae and my dad. Well, I grew up from listening to reggae like yeah. any other fathers. You know how it was growing mm. up in the like in, in 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 different places. Reggae is very it's universal. Yeah. You know, everybody loves reggae, whether you're Christian or you're Muslim or well, I don't know. Different people love yeah. reggae, like but most people, everyone loves reggae. So my dad used to listen to your torches, your manis, mm. you know, your eyes, uh, your banuelas, you know. So I grew up listening to that, and then my cousin. My cool cousin that I you know, she was amazing. He introduced me to your sizzlers, you know, that mm, era, that yeah, YFM era yeah. back in the day, you know. So we'd always listen and um, tape <laughs> the songs. So he got me into that and because I had to be a horror cafe. And I was still very young then, so I wasn't really allowed. So I remember I was in high school, would actually sneak out mm. and then go to a horror cafe. So I started seeing Amara, star, you know, I was like, I was amazed, like, oh, these yeah. people, you know, they're amazing, they're so cool, you know what I mean? And then a new town. And then I remember there was this one guy who was Rasta who worked for my dad. Mm. Yeah, he was also, he played a huge, yeah. huge, 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 oh, yeah. uh, 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 what you call it, influence in me yeah. also becoming. Because in Hambana, his name was Upili, like this guy, you know, a very, he, he was a best friend to Sister Tuli. Sister mm-hmm. Tuli's, uh, um, um, Bigo, yeah, Sankara. Sankara, yes. Yeah. They were best friends. So, okay, he would take me to a session. AOV, you know, go there. I mean, the best value is just close around the over. So, go to my um, um, sessions there. And then I started becoming interested in the movement. Mm. That's when my mom thought it was just a phase. Yeah, I should get yeah. over it. It's just one of those, you know. And then from there, I never looked back. I just found I was at home. I was like, okay, this is where I belong, you know. This is what I want to do. This is how I want to spend the rest of my life. You know, this is me. Yeah. That's how I got into the movement. Yeah. But what, what attracted you about the movement? Oh, okay. What attracted me about the movement was. For some reason, before becoming Rasta, I always had this edge of like soul searching, basically, like wanting to know. I felt like I wasn't satisfied with um, what we are told or how we are and how things are. I was like, I man, you know, something is missing. That's when I started researching. You know, I started doing my histories, going to libraries and reading about certain things. And then what triggered me was 
that edge of wanting to know the truth you know what i'm saying so i wanted to know more so i was like okay you know, for me this makes sense this is what i want to this is how i want to spend the rest of my life you know for me these people speak my language you know what i'm saying this is where i can say i relate to you know so that's when i started thinking okay no maybe you know what this is me you know that's what that edge of wanting to know the truth and wanting to know who we are as abantabam nyama you know what i'm saying where we come from and how we got here and you know where do we fit in the world you know what i'm saying just questioning isn't just ninja that are operating around yeah. you and everyone else yeah so when when you decided then to to become rasta and you get home and what do you say to your parents <laughs> or you just rock up with your Yo, you know red green and my gold sister and Yo, it was tough it was very tough because now there i am this kid in the suburbs you know okay it's like a foreign concept to them plus mm. my mother my by the way my mother and my dad both of them christian hardcore yeah. so my dad is a pastor so imagine now the daughter oh, decides to yeah. so um with this we like i think um people are not educated about certain religions and abanya bantu they stick to what they know yes, and that's yeah. it they want to hear anything else so anything foreign to them it's always going to be a threat you know it's like mm. how what is this you know so she didn't understand it at first my mom had a, like she could not you know but my dad was cool you know he was yeah. like ah i can't one you know let it be you know what i'm saying so my dad my mom and i we didn't get along mm. at all it was so bad to the point that at the age of 19 i had to leave home because mm. i felt like i was um making her feel uncomfortable in her own house you know it was very bad my mom is a nurse so she'll get home yeah. like at 6 a.m from like night to tea at, at the hospitals and then maga figa mina sengi bali hila ngiko because i'm avoiding to see her maslanga na slanga nendeleni and hey i don't know if you you know when you when you catch a fire yeah. your kid don't is a little bit exaggerated like the way you dress the covering yeah. up so she didn't understand what was going to her going on like with her daughter you know she was like ay when's i gonna now you know so we didn't get along it was very uncomfortable and i felt like you know what Ish. I can't keep on going on like this. Let me just let her be, you know. So I'm telling her, you know what, mommy, um I think I'm not that dela wako, you know, because I can see things are not you're not even willing to learn with sequence and alany how I am and how do I get to this point when why did I decide to say no now I want to live my life this way, you know. So I left, you know. <laughs> and funny enough after I left, I think it was three years later, Kani as I understand, you know. Yeah. She would like throw shade and say yeah. hey, you know, I'm like okay, you yeah. know, then eventually like I think it probably took her 10 years Whoa. to actually okay, okay this is me. Mm. <laughs> this is mm. this okay, is this is my changes, daughter. Phase, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it took her a long time to actually you know even the grand babies were getting born and but she was like hey you know when about hey they not they not this thing how eh you know mm-hmm. but eventually she got she warmed up to it you know yeah i can't really say she's like 100% happy yeah but it is this ritual but now she respects yeah. the fact that okay my daughter is old enough now to make her own decision and live her life and i can't really do anything about it you know what i'm saying yeah. this is who she is this is how i you know i mean i, I did my part as a parent mm-hmm. and then we also had to have that conversation as well you know we'll say, you know what mommy um i'm not saying that i've got anything against your way of life i respect how you are and i worship your ground because i wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you and even this this like um background it groomed me in a way you know what i'm saying i had to learn certain things and you know but i had to initially decide okay this is how i want to live my life now please let's respect one another and this is me you know yeah. take me as i am if not then unfortunately i can't change my mind if i can't change your mind about it uh, yeah. really i can't do anything about it mm. so then when it comes to being a select how did that come about yo <laughs> um yo um, it all happened okay just what second okay Ish, that's my track they're playing at the back yeah. yeah, i love it nice <laughs> nice nice yeah, soundtrack nice love <laughs> nice so mellow yeah yeah um the music man the music just calls you from anywhere you know so for me i was fascinated when i used to see the guys play and i was like oh this looks so cool i've always loved music i remember in grade 10 i was interested in playing but i didn't even know how to go on about it you know yeah. it just seems so impossible and whoever you spoke to about it they would always they would they wouldn't really 
build you or encourage you to like okay no you can do this this time you know and and bear in mind it's always been male dominated you know so it was very hard to get through just to like just penetrate through you know what i'm saying but i remember one day uh, this brother of mine that i was telling you about pilile he took us to Soweto, you know, and I remember they were going to dance, you know, and he kept on telling the eyes, you know. Mm. So this is, the guys, they, they're not going to take you seriously. Yeah. They're like, oh, whatever, she's one of those, you know, ah, groupy, you know. So they never took me seriously. So I remember in Zewangin Zerama City, you brother, well, I was in Zerama City. And then I remember this one time, Unok, Nabopo, Wutikal, and all of them, they had a session in Soweto. Wang Faga, even though, I think, it was like 10 minutes yeah. <laughs> you know i didn't even know what i was doing my sister honestly yeah. i was like, like just keeping everything through like okay you know yeah. but it was fun it was so nervous i was so nervous and i remember i had such nice music mm. yo my sister my heart broke me and Amangala, everyone was standing up, oh, busy crushing ganja, they doing my money in your own business hey, yeah. money, money in your own business they didn't care you know immediately after then i played the next selector came through they started playing and then they were having everyone was jumping to the same songs that i was playing yeah. but because now uh, I, it was bad back in the day you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and i remember i used to watch another daughter i was like yeah, yeah. i'm gonna be like that sister you know she used to she was one of the few sisters that used to inspire me and there was another sister i forgot her name but i remember at that time she was um sister corner back in the day she also used to select and she was good as well and i used to watch them and think yeah, I remember. And I used to look at them and think, yo, I wanna do this, I wanna do this. And shortly after that, I was mystically, I started getting into it. Yeah. And then, yo, fine. And then I, yo, I didn't get a lot of opportunities, unfortunately, back then. So it was one of those ones in the red, you know, like when there's no one. Yeah. <laughs> but you still appreciate the, the chance that yeah. you're there and you're doing your thing. And then um, I met this, um, I met this guy, you know, and he was like, okay, you know what? Um, yeah, you're gonna play, you're gonna play. It's like, okay, cool. I had music. I, uh, now I started becoming more motivated. Started practicing. I remember Pogotika was one of the first people to show me mix the sevens and Angela. Like, mm. okay, you mix Alena. This is how you use it. This is what you do. And I was hoping that he would give me more lessons. Yeah. Ah, the lessons never came. <laughs> I was like, okay, fine, whatever, you know. I started playing at home, even though I didn't have equipment. So I played like with whatever I have in me, you know. Mm. I literally taught myself how to play. I bought music. I did everything. But now, okay, I had uh, oh, you know, I and I was like, I you must stay home. Yeah. Started yeah. taking my series, this guy, <laughs> and then he started playing, and he was quite good. You know, I was like, yo, this guy, fine. And then that didn't happen. And then I was like, yo, okay, I maybe it was just a phase, mm-hmm. whatever, you know. And then I just became a mom and just focused on that. But then this thing kept on calling, kept on calling, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't ignore it. I was like, no, man, I love music. I'm going to continue doing yeah. this. So then I got back at it after like maybe 10 years, mm. I was even like involved in any of those sessions or whatever. And then I started playing again. Like, so like seriously, seriously playing. I think after uh, 2014, mm. that's when, in fact, 2013, that's when I started resuming back in the game. And now it was different because we decided, you know what, we're going to do our own sessions. Since in Ninga Funobu's father, yes, we're going to create our own hype. We're going to build up everything from scratch. Then from there, I started playing. I had no clue even then. Yeah, you know, yeah, it was just like yeah. rough and rough. I was like, ah, what's going on? But I had to learn, you know, and then I started pitching again and I was learning. And then that's when Lisa, then I started focusing. Mm. You know what, I really want to do this like on a serious level. You know what I'm saying? And then since then, yeah, I've always yeah. just, you know. Just so after after it. that first gig, how was it Gomes and Shop? Was it Gomes and Shop? Yeah. Zimplop, but how, yeah. how did you motivate yourself? to come back because I know crowd you know. I see star. <laughs> I've Tough. been there. Uh, but how do you get yourself uh, back up from, from uh, there? Because that's that's very I think something else. You know, when you're really passionate about something, you know what I mean, and you really wanna do it, not because now everyone else is doing it. Mm. You really love it. You know, you're not gonna yeah. give up, you know. I mean, with me, it was all odds against, yeah. you know, and like, unfortunately back then, uh, the brothers didn't really believe in us, you know, so it was very rare. It was only those handful sisters that were really like top yeah. doing their thing and respected, you know, like, okay, you know what, sister can play, she's mm. serious about this, she's not just trying to clown, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, other people think about your brothers, like, they just, mm. you know what I'm saying, not really into it, you know what I mean? So I had to really motivate myself, I want to do this, you know, I kept 
on trying and trying and trying and trying. And then I remember after Mzim I started getting into the hip hop era. You know, I remember there were a lot of hip hop sessions going around, you know, I was into hip hop a lot, you know. So then I was like inspired even more, oh, you know. Yeah. So I continued, you know, playing, even though I was not getting any a play from anywhere. It was mm. always those small sessions with like 10 people, <laughs> you mm. know, <laughs> just standing there like, okay. But I had to literally motivate myself because I wanted to do that, you know, I wanted to do it because it was something I was passionate about, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It was not something that, um, it was just a phase, like, okay, uh, play, in, in, in. Yeah. even though I know I won't will, will be playing for the rest of my life, you know, yeah. but I'm hoping with Nami, after me, there must be there other be people, other, yeah, you know, inspired, yeah. inspired to do, uh, uh, to, to play, because mm -hmm. I see you call yeah, Swangani, yeah. you know Swangani, but I feel like nowadays our opportunities are much more better than back in the day, you know what I'm saying? So you do get um the chances. Hence that's why um people like your King Hoods they endorse that thing yeah. the system must, you know. So it was also I that he gave me a chance like many, many times. He'd always yeah. come and call me to come to sister come and play, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and like every single time he plays up on a wooden cool, you know. He doesn't want me to be stagnant and stick to one thing, you know, like I literally had to start learning how to pitch like recently yeah. like um, with different equipments and I was like oh my god what's going on but uh, I'm loving that because it grows you you, know? yeah. you just have to open up and everything um, next time next time I'm finish high right now you know yeah. a lot of people buying, buying inspired you know so yeah so talking to. about being like um, female DJs being few you know where now how do you keep yourself relevant and you know um, be on par with with the mm. with the male male yeah. DJs. I don't want to say be on par, but mm. you know, for lack of a better way, yeah. Like, like how saying. do you like people when they think of a DJ, like oh, Empress Supreme? Mm. You know, how do you keep yourself relevant? Hey, um, yo, my sister, I believe that if you are passionate about something, you know what I'm saying, it will naturally just speak life to everyone else. Mm. Like, okay. The nice thing is we've got social media, you know. Social media is nice. It's a nice platform because now uh, people get to see who you are and yeah. um, people get to um, hear your mixes, you know. And, like, if you are good at what you do, and then people will vouch for you naturally. They will, they will like, say, okay, you know what? Who says that? Oh, yes, ma, you know. Ah, we yeah. want that, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like nowadays there's a need for us to be there because now finally we, we are being heard you know unlike before whereby we had to literally fight yeah just to get yeah. that attention you know so it's quite nice i'm actually inspired by a lot of guys that play mm. i get my inspiration from most of guys that play because that's why i'm like i want to play like that because not because it's a competition thing yeah but more of an inspiration like yo that guy is so good if i can mix like that mm -hmm. for me that's that's you know mm. even the sisters like t do like Tiro kills me every single time. Young Mulan sister, like yeah. her dance all sets. I'm always like, yeah, how does she get this? How does she do? I'm always asking King Man, like, how does she do that? Yeah. Like, how does she get these mixes right? So you have one to know sister, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when you're passionate about something that you do, and then it will shine through, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You don't even have to which is sometimes in jail all, all by means, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes uh, with uh, trying so hard and trying so hard for this relevance thing it can come across as a little bit too much in your face so you have to be quite uh, careful about it you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but uh we've got social media you know what i'm saying we're just out there you know people now, back in it back in the day i literally in people's yeah. inbox like guys yeah. i'm here you know what yeah. i'm saying so but um after time and more years and more experience it becomes much more nicer. You don't have to like run after people, you know. So mm -hmm. sometimes with mm -hmm. you get a call like, "Hey, sister, mm -hmm. we're doing this. Come through." So it's nicer that like that now, you know. Make sure at the level whereby I don't have to like run and and, yeah. and seek for attention or knock at people's doors. You know what I'm saying? I I would like to say I, I'd like to think that my work should actually speak yeah, for itself. For itself yeah. yeah. You know what? Um, let's go going back to you saying you had a family and you had to to stop you know mm. and couldn't you do both because you know there's a sense a lot of um female mm. you know they mm. end up not doing what they love because mm. of having mm. a family where you know tawanda can have a family but mm. can still tour around the mm. world you know how, how does that sit with you and uh, like when you stopped you know mm. how, how did you feel and did you feel what you couldn't do both you know, um, 
different relationships can take a toll on one you know and it all depends if that person i mean i, I believe that relationships are supposed to be we we're we getting to know one another yeah. so we're building you know and that means we also have to build one another you know what i'm saying if i'm passionate about something you have to respect that mm-hmm. and be with me you know what i'm saying i shouldn't be intimidate you that i'm doing one two three and then all of a sudden you're feeling otherwise you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying that's a bit toxic that's a bit yeah. weird because shouldn't people like all be winning at the same time you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying so it really did take a toll on me you know mm-hmm. i literally went a little bit depressed you know i'm, I'm an intro <laughs> by nature yeah. i keep to myself you know but it was unhealthy because now what happened is I was not allowed to go to sessions. I wasn't allowed to go out there and have fun. I was just like this housewife at home, you know, just minding the babies. Yeah. It was that kind of vibe. So it wasn't nice. It wasn't very nice. Um, fortunately, I had to grow up and realize, okay, you know what, this works for me and this doesn't work for me. You know, having mm-hmm. to have to make that mm-hmm. decision, mm-hmm. I came to my senses like, oh, you know, this is not good. Because mm-hmm. now if I'm going to, I have to dim my light down because I'm trying to impress you, yeah. that means then this is not healthy. It's not working out. You're okay, but I'm not okay. Mm-hmm. I have to stop who I am. You know why? You knew how you met, when you met me, you knew this yeah. person is this, you know, this, this is what she loves and she's passionate about this. Now all of a sudden I have to change who yeah. I am because, so that didn't work out very good, unfortunately. So um, luckily I ended up getting exactly what I wanted yeah. and now things are way better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so the problem wasn't having babies, the problem was this mm-hmm. person, yeah. because you could have, you could yeah. have done both. Yeah, yeah. the if person, up to you, yeah, yeah. If, if he was supportive then it would have been a, a different case, you know, we would have just, you know, done things. But mm-hmm. now we couldn't get things done because he, we were not on the same, same mindset. He had mm-hmm. his own intentions. And he got the spotlight. He got to play. He got mm. exposure. He was great at it. No problem. You know, I love that. But now me. What about me? You know, yeah. I can't be me. I can't express mm. myself mm. how I want to because now. So that the relationship never worked out. Yeah. <laughs> it just died. You know. But um, now things are better. You know, mm. life is much more better now. You know, I'm more relaxed. You know, I'm doing what I love. I'm, I still get shouted at every day yeah. <laughs> because he wants me to be here. Yeah, you yeah. know, he's very precise. He's always on point. You know, he wants everything to go accordingly. So I like that more than anything. Besides being my partner, he's my manager. Yeah. When we have to work, because I feel like sometimes we can be very relaxed as women. Not, not women as such per se. Like <laughs> when you've got yeah, someone that like this, like does yeah. everything for you you sort of come down yeah. and relax and you're like ah he'll do the selection mm. choosing for me he'll mm. do that so you know what i'm saying he keeps me on my feet like yeah, eh. you say you're a dj mm. so you have to mm. live up to it yeah. what's going to happen yeah. for your day so no 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 this is not working out yeah. before me what was happening who was doing this for me who was motivating who was doing all that you said you're doing this way before me so why now we relax because i'm here mm. so i respect that because now it keeps me grounded you know and it actually makes me want to work more and just do things mm. more than anything we don't look at a situation about like no we're in a relationship no we make sure we you know you want to be working first you know what i'm saying yeah. we've got the same common goal and i love the fact that we speak the same language which is music you know that's what actually <laughs> Got us together. Yeah, yeah. You speak the same language. The same language. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying. So that was yeah. pretty cool. You know, I was watching some documentary. I can't. I can't remember the the name of the documentary. So this lady was saying, um, women in in the music industry. You mm-hmm. know, in this case, I'll say in the reggae industry, mm-hmm. are treated differently. You know, in terms of looks. Um, this also goes for for artists, mm. you know, sex sells, mm. you know, they expect mm. you to look a certain, certain way, way mm. you know, mm. for you to sell. Mm. And w- w- what's your view on that? Because women, you, a car is there advertising a car, mm. but there's a lady, a lady sitting there on, on top of the hill with you. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You know, w- what's your view on, on that? You know? you know, my sister, she actually has a point to a certain extent, you know. Mm. Um, unfortunately, that's how the world operates now. It's true, my sister, sex does sell, mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If I were to come, you know, with my cleavage and the head, yeah, you know, yeah. I would get a different attention, you mm. know what I'm saying? But um, I'm not like that. Uh, there's nothing wrong with how they do it, because <laughs> I've had a lot of arguments with oh, this, yes. you know? So <laughs> it's one of those, for me, it's um, different strokes for different folks, you mm. know what I'm saying? That's how it is. It's Lelo Seswami, you know, those girls, they do get a lot of attention. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because maybe that's 
that's that's what they want I mean, whatever mm. the reason is you know what i'm saying i can't really answer for them because yeah, yeah. we are one but um uh, as fun <laughs> you know yeah. i i don't ever feel that i need to, in any given day for me to just go yeah. <laughs> while out <laughs> to get <laughs> I, because for me it's not about that it's mm. about what i can do you know what I'm saying? You go with what I can do. This is what I can do. This is what I can deliver. You know what I'm saying? If you're not comfortable with that, I'll peace out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's how it's always been with me. I've never felt the need. But however, image plays a very important role. Mm -hmm. So you have to carry yourself a certain way. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You can't. You have to kind of like keep clean. You know, be neat. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? If you want to show, if you're sexy, all about that sexy yeah. vibe, then yo, do you. You know what I'm saying? That's you. It works for you? Great. You know what I'm saying? I've never felt the need in any given day to have to expose mm -hmm. anything in order to get yeah. attention. Because I've always thought to myself, I mean, I've been in the in a creative industry for the longest time. I've always felt that um, if you do that, then you're always going to be doing that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to be like that. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. what happens if the boobs are now wrinkly, my mm. sister, you know, and then I can't show the bum or the hips, what happens? Mm. Then what? Mm. I'm going to want to go extreme. What's the, what, what are the conditions? You know what I'm saying? So for me, ah. But yeah. this is me, this is, it's always worked for me, you know, and as you in the near future, maybe I might become irrelevant and boring, but hey, you know, I would have said, okay, you know what, I've made my mark in life, this is me, I've done my part, and then it's fine. Yeah. yeah. And there's also this statement, and I'm sure you've heard it, the future is female. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, what's your take on that? How, how is the future female? You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Ne, um, it depends how you look at it. You know what I'm saying? Are you looking at it from uh, <laughs> um, what's that term? Uh, uh, feminist yes, term, yes, no, no. or are you looking at it <laughs> yeah. from a positive, you know, a po on, a positive on a positive? You know what I'm saying? Note, yeah. yeah my sister it's about time you know because mm. women play such an important role in life you know what i'm saying without women the world would be weird you know what i'm saying like <laughs> guys would just knock themselves into here you know like where, where there's a woman there's neatness you know where, where there's a woman you can tell okay you know you know what i'm saying so we play a very important role and, and we need to be heard and women have got so much to say you know so if it's on a positive scale then i'm up for it you know what i'm saying i believe that women need to be heard and i believe that women need to be getting a lot of opportunities now mm -hmm. i mean we are in 2020 you know what i'm saying yeah. it's no longer like back in the day caveats where i'm in yeah. the kitchen i can't do anything like i had to yeah. <laughs> sit down yeah. because now no when i like you got that one mm. You know, you can't play. Yeah, you play next year. Next year, become another next year. No, the times have changed now, and women are out there doing things, and women are doing amazing things. They just, you know, we just need to raise ourselves more and raise the vibrations even higher. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I'm, I'm, I'm up for it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm really, really up for it. And what's your view on the future of a female reggae selector mm. in South Africa? Well, where where mm. do you see us? Because, like you're saying, there's not a lot of female mm. DJs, mm. and those that are there, you hardly see them. You yeah. know, there's only you know mm. few like who are True. getting True. Uh, gigs and everything. Yeah. You know, my sister, I believe that um, nice as women, we need to be out there having our own sounds. Like Mina, yo. <laughs> I know maybe I'm just too much ahead of myself, mm. you know, mm. but I would love it one day with Nami being the Saudi Army and it would be so nice. It would be pretty dope because that can allow other women, nature other women to come mm. through and do their thing, you know what I'm saying? Umna and this is Swami because now uh, with us we need to get our own things, have our own things in order for us to grow, mm. you know what I'm saying? Mm. So if we don't have that and then we're always relying on other people, it's always going to be a problem. So um, if we can learn to be much more uh, self-reliant mm. and do our own thing, then we're going to have a better future. Then see as we in years to come, the little ones, the generation that's coming, they have a better chance, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So T, now we need to be fighting now in order for us to get there and actually have that. If we don't, then I, I don't see it because already Spangani. So I wish more sisters can also be like confident enough to say, hey man, I want to do this, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And 
it's very hard because uh, you have to fight. Mm. <laughs> you have to fight for the attention. <laughs> you know what mm. I'm saying? And eventually, if you're passionate enough, you will get there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I believe that. You know, with energy, it's something mm. else. You know, if you focus enough, and then you mm. get there. But you see, that's the thing. Um, you know, when you say you have to fight very really hard, I always. But why do I have to fight twice as hard if I'm good at what I'm doing? You know, what, what, what's the difference? You know, why, why do I have to fight very hard? And I think you can mix even or DJ select better than other yeah. males. Yeah. So why do you have to fight twice as hard as... <laughs> I guess um, that would be probably one of those egotistical thing, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. that whole male test the wrong thing, yeah. you know what I'm saying. So, um, unfortunately, it is male dominated. Mm-hmm. We cannot escape that. Hence, I'm saying, we need to do our own things, build our own sounds, you know what I'm saying. I'm so so Okay, i speak. You know, so save those cents, you know what I'm saying? Get those monies and then have your own things. If we have our own equipment, I mean, look at you. <laughs> You've got your own equipment. Mm. You don't have to, yeah, it's my man, go put camera, camera, I'm going to, guy, guy, in, in. no. You know what I'm saying? If we learn to just save up and, and get our own stuff and get, get our own things, mm. then we're going to do things ourselves. We don't have to wait on my man, wait on the man, wait on the man, wait on the man, wait on the man, wait on No, you do, you do our own thing. I, I believe that's what we need to do. Yeah. Just be self reliant, you know. Without mm. that, what else do we have? We're always going to be complaining. We say we're not getting opportunities. Unfortunately, in life, you have to create your own opportunities. Yeah. I know it sounds corny yeah. <laughs> because yeah. we're always yeah. hearing yeah. it. Yeah. Man, that's the truth, yeah. you know. So you have to push yourself. If you need you go out there and you get it. Yeah. And then with the we with we, 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 with energy, it's nice because now if you're out there doing it, same thing. Somebody calls you like, hey man, I've got this. Do you want it? And yeah. then get yeah. and everything is just out there, mm. you know. Mm. Like, um, I asked Uchi Roots the same question, and now with 2020 happening, <laughs> My sister, not or should we say happen because we're not counting it anymore? How are you finding the, the streaming? Because we've been, you know, one of those who have been, you know, mm. seeing, we've been seeing online quite a lot. How, how's the vibe? Do you know, Yeesh. do you miss the, of course. the normal? Oh, yeah. my sister. It's great, ne? It's great. Like I'm, 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 I'm humbled and blessed, you know, because it's a great opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Mm. To, but it's not the same, hey. Mm. It's not the same because I feel like, um, if you're already used to um, seeing people and the crowd yeah. and the way they respond yeah. when you're playing, you know, and the energy that you, you know, you, you, you portray when you're up there doing your thing, yo. That's that dead on its own. It's something different. You know what I'm saying? So it's not the same. <laughs> Trust me, it's not the same. But now with technology, you know what I'm saying? We have to keep up with times. Yeah. You know? I mean, every time I play, I'm always looking dumb as hell. <laughs> like, <laughs> what's going on? You know, it always takes me like yeah. a second or two to get it right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But um, unfortunately, if you like what you do, you're going to persist and then persevere, you know, and mm. try and find means to make it work. Mm. You know, I mean, 2020 took a toll on all of yeah. us. Like, it's left us hard. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's difficult, very difficult. But we, we like, we have to maneuver through it. Yeah. Yeah. But in in future, let's mm. say, well, if things do get back to normal, you know, <laughs> would means? you still consider uh, doing the online, the online platform? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I would. I would. You know, because it's nicer. Because now, what happens is, you get exposed to like different uh, environments like even people from everywhere they get to see you you know what i'm saying which is pretty cool mm, because mm-hmm. now before it was just us, us so yes, it's like ah, yes, that's yes, you, whatever yes, yeah. show you know whatever you know so now the nicer thing is it's vast you know mm. so it's it's like worldwide mm. so everyone else mm. gets to see you oh, this is sister in SA that's doing mm. one two three it's nice you know it's very nice because now you, i even get sisters from berlin sisters from france mm. sisters from mm. usa my sister from us would be like mama when are you streaming i'm like yeah. So it's quite exciting, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh wow, okay, this is mm. something.
something new, I can work with this, you know what I'm saying? So why not, you know? And I guess under normal circumstances, <laughs> it would have taken you longer. Mm. I'm not saying you're, you're a bit select, I'm just saying, you <laughs> no, know, no, now no, 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 people, no, are, just, people mm. are like, yeah. Yeah, you know? no, it's pretty cool, my sister. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's, it's got its, it's, 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 you know, its advantages. It's mm. nice, mm. but yeah, it's just not the same. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the same. Yeah, you like miss the, the screen. Yeah. Pull up. Yeah, <laughs> the energy. You know? Yeah. I love when people chant. You know, mm. even if it's just like one guy just doing his thing, I love I focus on that because for yeah. me it's like ah oh, that guy, you know, he's feeling the music, you know, and the music is speaking. Mm. I like that. So yeah. it's quite nice, you know, the crowd. It, mm. It's pretty cool. So um what's the future looking like for you in terms of your selecting and you know and being yeah. DJ? Oof. Wow, um like I feel like I honestly feel like um, I started late <laughs> to <laughs> get yeah. recognition, you know, but I'm still grateful. Um, I still have a lot to do and a lot of places, uh, like I have a lot of places to go. Like I would love to tour like Africa. Mm. Like I'm not really interested in going to yeah. For me that doesn't really, I mean, I'm not, I mean, I would love to, it would be great, you know, but I would love to go to different countries and, you know, and actually play and hear that country how do they vibe and yeah. how do they do things for me um, um i feel like i i haven't really done much yeah. <laughs> like when i see other sisters and i'm like ah, ah, you know what i'm saying i get inspired yeah. i get inspired to want to do better you know and work more so i honestly feel like uh, i'm still a baby yeah. <laughs> you know what i'm saying even though other people are like ah sister you're always on flyers i'm like ah, for me that's nothing that's nothing mm. you know the works must manifest you yeah. know not just only beyond sa you know what i'm saying mm. when i see mystical ebony flying to um dubai or for flying to mauritius mm. i'm like wow this is nice you know what i'm mm. saying she got to taste different yeah. you know um places it's it's nice it's, it's nice you know what i'm mm. saying so i i feel like ish, there's a lot of work to be done yeah. there's a lot of work to be done like Askaga is the next like we yeah. still we're still there. <laughs> Down mm. there. But at least you're there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you there. You have one foot in, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not gonna be modest about it. Honestly, yeah. I'm I'm always yeah. grateful for the opportunities and every time people think of me, I'm always humble. Every time. Mm. I'm like, what? This person just contact me for me. It's, it's, it's nice, you know what I'm saying? It's like wow, okay, these people are recognizing mm. me for my works. Mm. So it's I but like now, you just have to level up even more, yeah. you know what I'm saying, mm. level up even more. It's just that thing of wanting to go and you know, going to just become better in what you do, just craft it and become much more better at mm. mm. yeah. And your, your top three countries like that you want to tour? <sighs> I'd love to go to Namibia, I'd love to go to Zim, I'd love to go to Moz, yeah. Mozambique. Yeah. Why? Why are those places? Yo, oh. Namibia is beautiful for one. Mm. And Zim, I love, I love, love the energy, like especially when it comes to reggae. Mm. I feel like with um, uh, Zimbabwe, there's so many people that are like so talented there, you know mm. what I'm saying? I would love to see how it is, you know, to be there and playing there with the people in the crowd. And I can tell they're a tough crowd. Yeah, I can tell they're a tough crowd. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. For me, it's a challenge. Yeah. That would be something that I would really love to partake in, you know what I'm mm. saying? And then Mozambique also. Mozambique is very, very, very nice. Yeah. I would love. I'm not quite sure when it comes to reggae, how fast mm. they are. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. Yeah. So, mm. yeah. Mm. Timo, I haven't done. Maybe one has to do some research and yeah. see what yeah. do they get up to there. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's yeah. happening. Um, yeah. um, Namibia, I remember my cousin, my cousin Aneo, he'd always say, oh, my sister. Because I remember like, at some point you wanted to go to Jamaica with me. I'm like, oh, mm. I need to go to Jamaica. You know, you got money. Take me. He's like, no, let's go. And then he, I remember he was in Namibia. He was telling me like, yo, you would love the mm. reggae scene there, you know. Mm. So reggae is like worldwide. And it's yeah. also like international, yeah. you know. So everybody loves reggae. Everywhere mm. you go, everybody loves reggae. Mm. And, and your, I'll say top five, but top three reggae artists, roots reggae, reggae dancehall, you know. <laughs> who, who, who do you vibe with? La locally or like internationally? Anyway. Oh, such a tough question. <laughs> it's like <laughs> this question is so difficult because it's like okay, today who are you vibing to? Yeah. Who are you yeah. vibing to yesterday? Oh my gosh, yo, Ish, that's a tough one. Um, yesterday I was vibing to Queen Omega. You know, yes. I, Queen Omega she has a lot to say. That Numa, you know, she's a fireful Numa. You know, and then I think it's a difference with it being a DJ and a selector. You know, yeah. because now today I could be feeling 
queen omega tomorrow my feelings and see ya you know yeah, what i'm saying yeah. so i can't really say yeah, honestly but, speaking but, i'd yeah. love to but uh, Ah, it's an unfair question. This is very unfair question. I know, but you know, I, I like to hear what people, you know, listen yeah. to. You Yo, know? I listen to everything, my sister. Yeah. Everything. I love hip hop. Like mm. for me, before even reggae, hip hop was my first love. Like yeah. I was like, oh, you know, I've always been ahead. But mm. more than anything, like I have different days. Whatever. Like I even. I'm learning how to play I'm a piano my sister so you know I'm not only stagnant into one thing you yeah. know I get to explore and do all these crazy things you know because I believe yeah. you know, can't limit yourself you know what I'm saying so it's, I I play different music all the time sometimes mm. I'm listening to R&B sometimes I'm listening to dancehall you know it just on the mood yeah. you know what I'm saying but more than anything I love midnight Yeah. I love midnight and you know people was hey this guy you got to play sad you are like sad you know but, but I'm like but I don't why, know why 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 do you resonate with him mm. yeah I don't midnight. know I like like Cause I said quite deep. he is it's he deep. is he's no, like deep asleep right deep. now no he's like <laughs> It's very deep, man. If you listen to midnight, yeah, he's saying he things. Is, there, he's very yeah. profound, that man. Um, like I said, I loved hip hop mm. first. Hip hop mm. is my first love, more than anything. Uh, for me, midnight is midnight. I care about that. He's he's hip hop. For me, yeah. he's a rapper. You know what I'm saying? He's like very intelligent, very intelligent. You know what I'm saying? Mm. What he says, you know, what he speaks about. It, he's like so ahead of everything mm. and anything. You know what I'm saying? So he speaks to me. Like I understand him, I understand what he's saying. You know what I'm saying? And he's an artist. You know, for me, he's like a messiah. For me, he's like, he's like a, a messenger. <laughs> you know? So I don't know. I understand him better. You know, I understand him better. I don't know. I yo, I that guy. Yo, I love yeah, that guy. Yeah, no, I, I feel him. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I love that guy. Like yo, yeah, I could I listen to that guy the whole day. Even the best after. Hani <laughs> amotanda. <laughs> Yeah, let, let, let's talk about something. Uh, your, your man, manager, having mm. a manager, how important is it for one to have a manager? Yo, my sister. Yeah. Yo, like I feel like we take a lot of things for granted. Mm. You know, we take a lot of things for granted because in everything you do, if you want to be taken seriously, you need to make sure everything of yours is on par. Mm. Everything is on point. You know what I'm saying? I. Like it's so crucial, you know. It's so crucial. Like when he came about, he didn't even wanna do it. I mm. literally forced him to do it. I was like, ah, I do, you know. You mm. seem to be cool up, you know. You yeah. need, like he had the background, you know. You know, it's so important because now if you've got a good manager, you, everything else just gels. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And if you speak the same language, it's even much more better. Like working relationship is so important because now, after I got him. Even the kind of gigs I got, my sister, mm. they were much more better than the ones mm. I had previously. Mm. You know what I'm saying? After us, it was more of like, okay, now you know what? Now she knows her worth. You mm. know, so therefore, now you can't just just take an advantage of her. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah. for me, it was so important because even though a lot of people at first they're like, hi, they would always inbox me like, hi, sister, mm. in, 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 you know, mm. and then it was that kind of relationship friendship relationship mm, you know because i know you i smile yeah, with you now yeah, i can say anything yeah. you know even if i give you 50 rand it's fine for you it's okay you know mm. so with a manager it's so nice because now he takes care of everything i know mm. that you know what um, everything is going to go accordingly so everything is professional because i believe that in everything you do you have to be professional about mm. it you know and when you start becoming professional people start treating you differently, differently you know what i'm saying it's no longer they say we buy ah ah you know they treat you like ah you don't exist whatever mm. you know so it's it's very important because it sort of also like yeah god in yeah. a way you know what i'm saying now you become a different person to people you know what I'm saying? Like, sister moves differently now you know yeah. she's no longer trotting the same way she was trotting before so it, it's 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 important it's yeah. very important i believe that um if you want your things to go accordingly and you know you need to get one yeah. it's important that you get one you know what i'm saying you're gonna get the work done mm-hmm. you know it's, it's very essential that you get a manager yeah. it's well, because you're right because i think a lot of artists and djs they mm-hmm. don't I don't I won't say no but they don't understand the that concept of having a team mm. you know someone to back you up mm. here and there because you can't do them all you, you can't be taking lead. calls yeah. while you 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 DJing it's or crazy. while you on stage it's you know? crazy it's really yeah. crazy because um if you don't take yourself seriously no one else is going to take you seriously you know what i'm saying mm. so sometimes when you take certain steps in life where you're like, you know okay you know what now i need to level up and do one, two, three. and more than anything we need to educate ourselves 
I feel like uh, we're so relaxed, we're so chilled about a lot of things. Mm. You know, we need to, like, in everything you do, you need to educate yourself. Mm. Hence, I was saying to you earlier on, which I have so many things to do. Yeah. Like, I still feel like I haven't done, I haven't touched, you know what I'm saying? We need to educate ourselves within the, like, when it comes to the music industry, how it operates. Mm. Everything mm. from the finances to, like, Yonki, though, you know, mm. you have to put up. And, mm. and if you want people to take you seriously, you need to educate yourself. Yeah. You need to make sure that you know everything else is sharp. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's how it is. Yeah. And mm. you listen to reggae, mm. South African reggae. Where where do you think we at right now? <laughs> Yo, eh. South African reggae is a promoter You know, um, we're getting there. You know, honestly, we're getting there slowly but surely. Hence, I'm saying earlier. Since I was saying, um, it's important that we teach ourselves. You know, and we need to educate ourselves. Uh, we have a lot of dope artists. You know, mm-hmm. um, they're very good. They're very good, but I feel like they need to step up. You know, mm-hmm. um, my sister, check how other genres are doing, and look at reggae, and look at reggae in SA. How often do we get it played when it comes mm-hmm. to like our socials, like your mainstreams? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's not very often. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So also how we conduct ourselves. We need to be professional. No much high video yako swami, you know, be clean about it. You know what I'm saying? We've got technology, my sister, and with technology you can only use it for Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. You need to be out there googling stuff, you know, mm. check things out. Okay, this is how they do this. I mean, I literally go to people's pages and check how mm. they do things, especially people that inspire me. I'm like, wow, okay. So this is how he gets this done. This mm. is how she gets this done. This is pretty dope. You know what I'm saying? And then it grows you. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Then you try and make your life easier. Yeah. You know? Um, I feel like our industry when it comes to South Africa, it's still yet to get more exposure you know what i'm saying because right now we're there but we're not there Mm. you know what i mean so maybe if we also also on our side we take ourselves seriously and everything we try and do it with a little bit of profession things will be but much more better because now with the mainstream they don't take you seriously (laughs) when you come there and you just like you know just sleeping Mm. they're just like ah this one is probably hyped Mm. you know what i'm saying so i believe that we need to take ourselves seriously you know our artists they pretty dope. Like I love yeah. you. I fire eyes. This is your momos. You don't yeah. riot. You know the bong riot is amazing yeah. by the way because mm. it's so versatile, which is very important. Mm. You know that when you're an artist, mm. you must be able to multitask. You know you must be versatile. You must not only just do like one thing, one thing. You become boring to yeah. people. You know. Yeah. So it's nice, but slowly, surely we're getting there. Mm. You know, hopefully in the near future, isn't this over? Yeah, we're yes. talking another. You know, story. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So that's yeah. very essential that you grow. Yeah. Growth is inevitable. You need to grow. Yeah. yeah. And your message to people out there, you know, to the reggae nation, <laughs> to the selectors. Yeah. Mm. Yo. Um, reggae is one thing that we all love, you know, we all love reggae, wow. reggae is such a beautiful genre, it's a beautiful music, you know, um, we just need to be all work together, you know, we need to unite and then so that our things can prosper, you know, other genres, the things are prospering because Baba Mbise, you know, everyone mm. else is able to say, hey man, I've got a DJ, DJ Smang Mang, I'll come and talk my DJs and they play mm. and see how I'm Nandi, you know. We need to stop competing, you know, we need to support one another and most importantly we need to support women. We need to have more women within the industry that are playing. You know, they're always gonna see supreme until I become boring mm. to people. Because you know why? Other sisters may buy a saba, they scared to make that that actually taking the next step to do one yeah. three. You know what I'm saying? I'm always availing myself to people, but I don't even know it's maybe I'm a bit <laughs> too serious and people are like, ah, that sister, you know, I'm getting or what, and I, yeah. you know, but people are scared to just come and interact, you know, because I'm always wanting to, I want to teach people, I want to, whatever I know, I would like to share mm. with others, you know what I'm saying, we need to promote your reggae music mm. to another level it needs to grow even further from what it is but so far the progress is it's getting there you know what i'm saying yeah. so it's getting there you know what I mean? people are doing amazing things from everywhere which is quite nice to see so it's inspiring with love and unity is so all of mm. us that's what i can say all right no thank you 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 yeah, that you feel it. <sighs> it's women's month yes. yo it's women's month all the beautiful flowers out there they need to keep it real do more works yeah. <laughs> let's talk on facebook uh, you know <laughs> so more than anything uh 
swami on his own love yeah it's all love 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 is the foundation without love you don't have anything mm-hmm. um you must respect women you must empower women women need to be also get out there and not just only <laughs> shout behind their thumbs on yeah, social media yeah. you need to just you know out there get things done because i know women have a lot of things to do mm-hmm. you know, and you, yo so many sisters inspire me and i'm always looking and like wow i want to do that i want to do that oh my god that's so nice you know what I'm so we just need to push ourselves even more most importantly we just need to do ourselves yeah. i can't do any i can't say anything further than yeah. that i'll be lying <laughs> <laughs> i'll be lying right. thank you thank you so much yeah, thank, thank you, you very very much. welcome thank you so much for your time man uh, thank you so much for your pleasure. time it's a pleasure yeah, it's a pleasure i appreciate Set it again there. Pick it up. So
Yes. 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 Some talent this one. Coming out of the I know. Yeah, I don't know. In a boom sound. We not deal with music only. Sin. We deal with Rastafari teachings. Yeah, man. Music. Clothing. Smoking operators. You don't know sin. Yeah, man. Anytime you want something.